I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi at Temple B'nai Israel, and we are coming to you from the basement of the Avalon Theater, the studios of MCTV, and I am delighted to have my friend Tony Kern here with us uh, for the first segment of this taping. Uh, just so you'll know, Tony is, uh, and this is how I know him, we, are, we serve together on the board of the Eastern Economic Development Corporation, which I am very proud to be on. Yeah, uh, you guys, yep. you guys are so visionary. I just feel out of place, but that's okay. <laughs> um, Tony is a, a retired managing partner with the global accounting and consulting firm Deloitte and Touche. Yep. Very cool. He is a board member, as I said, of the Eastern Economic Development Corporation. A member of Clarent. 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 Yep. Yes. Member of Clarent. Yep. And board member and chairman of the Eastern Shore uh, Entrepreneurship Center, and he's a board member of the Maryland Capital Enterprise. Welcome to the Rabbi's Thank Round you. Table. Always good to see you. Yeah, always, yeah. always. So I thought we would talk today about a couple of things. Uh, I first, let's talk a little bit about what's out there that people need to be aware of, right. starting with uh, Chesapeake Harvest. Let's right. let's tell folk what it is and how it's sponsored, yeah. how they can. Get so that's that's a great way to start because it impacts us directly here yep. Yep. in Easton and the entire you know surrounding yep. area. So Chesapeake Harvest is a brand that we've been working on. It's a local food brand that we've been working on for for maybe five coming up on five years wow. now. Okay. And where it is right now is we have a digital platform up where people can order retail and wholesale products that are all local. So if you go on the website right now, you see um, all the fall right. vegetables yep. are coming through. Apples, Sweet potatoes, yeah. apples, yep. and all that good stuff. There's mushrooms on the website yes. right now. Um, and one of the biggest sellers on the website is our meats, local meats. Yeah. So they're, you know, sausage, there's ground beef, yeah, there's all steaks, sorts. It's, it's chicken, really the amazing. Chicken. The chicken is a sellout yeah, every time. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. The, um, the other thing that you'll find on the website, you know, it just depends on the time of year, is there are, uh, there is locally, uh, locally ground and made coffee, there are spices that are local, yeah. and a whole section on desserts, and they're all locally Not made. Not that I've ever gone. Right, now that you know, I noticed you never <laughs> ordered any dessert. So, but, uh, but that's what it is. So well, the, I, the reason behind that is because you have a lot of uh, small and mid-sized farmers surrounding Easton, throughout Talbot County, but up and down the Delmarva Peninsula, and very few of those farms have electronic access, right? So yeah. this gives people a digital, you know, an internet-based platform to order food from, from our local farms, and that really doesn't, ex doesn't exist. Right, that's really um, important. It's really, really important. And the other thing I like to tell people is, you know, when you're buying off the platform, when you're buying uh, the, from the, our local farmers, you're putting money right back yep. into our economy. Yep. Yep. Um, and of course, we're not going to replace any of the big grocery chains, although I do know some people who almost shop exclusively on the website. Um, but wow, what a great supplement, and you're helping the economy. Well, that, and I have to tell you, uh, I've purchased garlic. Oh, it's, the garlic, it's, it's, not, it's like night and day between what right. you get in the grocery store right. It's, it's tangy, it's pungent, it's, it's real garlic, it's, and, and the mushrooms are fabulous. Right, because they're, you know, they're yeah. coming yeah. right off the farm to you in yep. a matter yep. of days yep. rather than, although, you know, there's a very established uh, supply chain across the U.S. and stuff of does get, move around quickly, but this is coming to you within days, yeah. and it's yeah. local. And it's not, it's not, that's not a, 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 a pejorative comment about the grocery stores no. here. That's no. not, it's just, it's fresher and it's... Yeah. It's really, it's really cool. You know, I, I just like to tell people that it's a, a great way. I mean, if you like to eat local and, you know, there's a set of standards that are out there that Chesapeake yeah. Harvest um, uses with all of its growers. Um, and, you know, you're getting, you can read about the standards on the website, right. which is chesapeakeharvest.com. We will put but, that up. Yeah, and, you know, if, if that's what you're interested in, this is a great way well, to support your neighbors. Yes. They're your neighbors. And, and, and it's, it's. Healthy food, you it's know, very it's, healthy. you know, it's farm fresh, no preservatives, yeah. no none of that stuff. And no. the, I, I know that that uh, for Chesapeake Harvest, that's an important component of, of what what you do. Absolutely. So uh, yeah. you know, that's that's very cool. Yeah. Um, and and it, the menu changes seasonally, basically. Or? It does change seasonally. So all the things you would expect in summer. So I think this is the other point that it's important for everybody to understand is. 
you know, we certainly expect this huge treasure trove of tomatoes and vegetables right. all summer. Right. Uh, but the, the way to make this work and the way we've been able to make it work is you've got to have product available year round. So the cold weather products are coming out now, yep. the cooler weather yep. products. As we get into the heart of the winter, you'll still have all the meats and mm -hmm. vegetables. And there are things that are grown in greenhouses up and down the shore that people will oh, see excellent. in there as well. Excellent. And, and that's ChesapeakeHarvest.com? ChesapeakeHarvest.com. We'll, we'll put that up underneath. Along with this, you are involved in another exciting project, and that has to do with the armory. Our beautiful armory. In downtown Easton. In down, historic downtown so, Easton. So tell, tell us what's going on, and because and, I know because we're taping when the, when the uh, craft, the craft fair is at the right. economy, yeah. uh, they're using this as part of their display area. So I think, you know, most of the viewers have probably been in the building before. They probably have not been beyond that main drill hall. Yes. Which our working title for that is Festival Hall, but for Waterfowl Festival or Plan Air or the craft show that's going on right now, um, it's an amazing space. And there's a whole basement mm -hmm. to it as well. And there's also an upstairs to it, about half the size of the drill hall. Um, the building was built in 1927. It's a, a long time ago. And there are lots of identical buildings up and down the East Coast. So the government built these armories. It was basically a set of blueprints. Oh, wow. And a I lot of towns got them. A lot of small towns got them. Um, ours is listed on the, uh, the Maryland Historic Trust Register. Oh, wow. So I tried to do something really... When we were looking at what to do with the building, I tried to I did something really horrible. I, Asked if I could tear it down just to make sure I couldn't, and the answer, of course, was absolutely not. I was half Good. joking when yeah. I asked them, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they were not happy with that joke. So, but but what that did is that triggered a hundred thousand dollar grant, or it helped trigger that to replace the windows. So the building itself is really leaking energy, right? It's got its original windows in it, so we got a grant to replace the windows to actually restore the windows with thermal pane glass oh, nice. in them, so which is really going to help. But the uh, the boiler, I think, goes back to the 1970s. The roof needs to be replaced. But what a magnificent historical yeah. gathering place yeah. in the heart of our downtown, across from the academy, just down the street from the building we're sitting right. in now, the right. Avalon. You know, it's this arts and entertainment triangle at this end of Harrison Street, yep. and, and that space is really important. We've had two... Uh, public meetings now to get input. I think we had about, in, in the two meetings, 75 or 80 people show up. Okay. And uh, we talked about what would you like to see, and it was pretty unanimous what people would like to see in the building. Um, they'd like to, you know, like to see it restored, and they'd like to see you know, modern amenities in the building. Yeah. So the, you know, the main thing you have to start with, and which we are starting with, is um, you know, the building envelope itself. Mm -hmm. So the roof, there's no insulation on the roof at wow. all. Right. So if you look up, you know, there's no insulation. Uh, so we're working on uh, getting bids now for an insulated roof. We're working on the windows right now. Uh, HVA, uh -huh. HVAC systems will be nest. They have very high efficiency systems right now. Because the main drill hall, the piece we all right. use, right. you know, yeah. it's heated, but yeah. the air conditioning units that are in there now, which were, uh, you know, donated very yeah. generously by somebody who lives here, uh, can't keep up with the heat load right. in there. So we're going to put a commercial system. Right. How far along are you in the project? Uh, so right now, you know, we we were we were very fortunate. That we got this grant from the state of Maryland, from the Maryland Historic Trust, and we were just named uh, by Preservation Maryland as one of the six to fix. So oh, they really? picked six buildings around the state oh, and they donate architectural services, engineering services, oh, research, finance services. So we have that for the next you know, year or so. Oh, that's terrific, that. that's yeah. terrific. Yeah. Um, and if people want to contribute, and is there a way to do that? Well, you know, there is. Or? I think there's two places you could come. You certainly could contact us at the EEC. Right, right. Or you can uh, contact Margaret Enloe. She's the executive director of the uh, right. of Waterfowl Chesapeake. Oh, right, yes. Yeah, and just sure. call over there and yeah. talk to her. So there is going to be some fundraising. Um, you know, I don't think we've completely settled on exactly how we're going to finance all this, but there are a lot of programs out there. There's a commercial energy program out there that's available to us. I believe there's some state money available to us, but 
We know the uses of the building. Yeah. It's the usefulness of the building right, right now right. Um, that, um, well, you know, that needs to be fixed you're up. You're right. It, it's, a, it's a great location. It's, it's, it's a historic spot. Yeah. And what we don't want to see is it just sit there and disintegrate. Right. And, and you know, that's, you know, and I think Waterfowl Chesapeake, who is the owner of the building, has done a good job yeah. at keeping it up. But it's a heavy lift. You know, when you have to tear a roof off a building right. that big. Like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but still... Waterfowl is so important. It will continue to be, as far as I know, the home of waterfowl. Yeah, yeah. Right. It is a centerpiece in town. The idea is just to get this building upgraded. I'd like to get it self-supporting. You know, so lots of different events in there. Right. Um, right. Programming the building, at, you know, as it's being programmed right now with the craft show. Yep. You know, an antique show. People have mentioned a winter's farmer's market inside. Ooh. That would be very cool. To that have would be inside. extremely cool. Yeah. So there's lots of good ideas. You know, plus some people want to have the, their 50th wedding anniversaries. Yeah. We want to make that available to the public yeah, at yeah. a very low cost yeah. and have some of these other things support the building. A absolutely. No, I, I hope I hope people uh, buy into the vision and, and help move it along. Yeah. It, it is important. And uh, uh, we, we do want to maintain a vibrant downtown. Yeah, and that's really important. Yeah. I think when you think of all the people who can come through that, um, or whether they're visiting the Avalon or the Academy or some event that's going on in our armory building, the merchants downtown will really benefit. You yeah. want to have that vibrant, Absolutely. you know, hyper local historic downtown where people are eating and people are shopping and people are staying at the hotels and the that's bed and breakfast locations that are open. So it, it, it just adds to the vibrancy of, of, of Easton. So Absolutely. and you're also working on Easton Point. Yeah this the, is this is really interesting. This is really interesting. Um, you know, there's been a lot written about Easton Point. So the EEDC is working right, on Easton right, when you say me, right, it's the right, EEDC. Right, yes. um, you know, it's funny when people visit here, of course, I, I grew up in Washington, D.C., so I've always known about, you know, Easton, you come to Easton, but it's yeah. usually on my way to, right. to the beach, yeah. you know, and now that I'm living here for uh, nine years, you, you start to hear people who are visiting and say, well, Easton's absolutely beautiful. Where is its water? Does it have water? Yeah. But actually, and I'm not taking anything away from our sister towns of St. Michael's and Oxford, which are I always recommend go visit go visit them while you're we here because they're, they're very special. Um, but we have this beautiful waterfront down at Easton Point. It's at the end of Port Street. The water is deep. The sun sets yep. down uh, there. The birds are great. The birds. It's absolutely beautiful. And so there's been a, you know there's been a lot in the paper. And a lot of discussion about how to move that forward. Yeah. If you look back and you read some of the some of the history of the point and of the town, you'll see I, we found drawings of sawmills down there from the 1800s. Right? It's a real historic area. It's I mean, a very uh, historic area, and I and people have lived there, but I think for a very long time there has been this kind of industrial feel to it. Right? Yes. Steamships used right, to come in right, there yes. to take people over to Annapolis and up to Baltimore. Um, obviously, those steamships are gone. There are easier right. ways, although the bridge is an issue right well, now. Well, of course. But there are easier ways, yeah. to, easier ways to get to those locations. So I think the general feeling is that this should be, you know, it's, it's basically reclaiming Easton's historic waterfront, you know, with a park, with, yeah, you know, wonderful. with moving, you know, hopefully eventually moving out the, you know, we have a couple uh, kind of, uh, pay gas stations down there, um, you know, hopefully moving those and, you know, and, and making a beautiful park. And there's been talk about housing down there. Yeah. Uh, we have a handful of private owners who own land down there, including a marina. And, but you can see pretty easily right. how this can go from having this very industrial feel to it to being this absolutely gorgeous yep. waterfront park for the town of Easton and for the mid-shore. Sure. And, you know, preserving a boat ramp, doing all those and, and, and recreational and entertainment things that, you know, people like to do. And yeah. making it even prettier and more more yeah. accessible. Talk about a boardwalk around that it. That would be so cool. It would be very you know, cool. Extend trails, rails to trails. Trails. So I'm really excited about that. You know, again, it's it's a 
it's a big program, requires a lot of coordination between private owners yeah. and government yeah. and, you know, the county and the state. And, and the city. And obviously. the city, obviously. And we're, and we're getting, you know, we're getting some momentum now. The mayor and town council have done a good job and the county council is doing, you know, a nice job. And I think people are starting to see that vision. Well, you know, not to be... Not to be overly rabbinic, but the statement is where there is no vision, the people perish. Yes. That's from well, the book of Proverbs, in case anyone wants to check. But, uh, <laughs> I knew you'd get that yeah, in yeah, here somehow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but that's really true. Uh, we have to have a vision. Yeah. Right? And yeah. It has to be, we have to keep moving forward you know, yeah. to, to grow and develop and pass on to uh, the next generation part of that vision. Yeah, now, you know, part, part of that planning process for Easton Point is to make sure it's tied sufficiently to the historic downtown of Easton, yeah. um, because we want we want both to you know thrive and and there's a you know pretty easy ways to do that. Yeah. So um, I think the EEDC, speaking for you and my other well, yeah, colleagues yeah, on the board, yeah, yeah. you know, there we're aware of all the concerns. We're working on all those concerns, but I think the vision to have this is a beautiful beautiful place in Easton to go with these magnificent sunsets yeah. and deep water and all the waterfowl that are down there wow. um, is really, really something special. I, I will occasionally go down if, I, if I'm available and have the time to watch the sunset and yeah. I'm not being gratuitous. It really is spectacularly beautiful. And, I, and You know, for 150 years or 200 years since it's been, you know, because the town is very old, you know, it's been kind of a working, it was a working yeah. waterfront. Oh, yeah. And and for whatever reason, it just didn't develop into what we're talking about. But there's a time and place for everything. And I, it's the time the, is now. The, town is, the time, time is, is now. now. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll, we'll come back, we'll do more about this as yeah. it moves forward. I'll bring think, charts. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> fine. You bring whatever. I, 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 think, I think it's really, I think it's just so important. Because it impacts the quality of all our lives. Really does. Uh, and we have we have access to such beauty and such availability of nature. Right. Not to not to protect it and and not just protect it, but but uh, make it so we can take advantage. Right, so we can all share it. That's exactly right. correct. Um, you know, one of the one of the things we always say at the Economic Development Corporation is, you know, we want to support the vitality of East. Yes. It's not just Easton, it's kind of greater Easton as well. Right. St. Michael's does well, we do well, we do well, they do well. I mean, we want to be able to, what we've been sort of calling greater Easton, you know, yeah. it's areas outside of the town itself. Correct, correct. Um, but supporting that economic vitality, and that, and that includes every level. That's, you know, that's workforce housing, mm -hmm. that's making sure there are opportunities for people to work at all different levels. Um, you know, that's making sure that our parks and, yep. you know, and our waterfronts are accessible. That's, you know, and there's a lot of elements that go into making up a town, whether yep. it's Manhattan or it's Easton. That's right? correct. It's and the same, they're the same infrastructure right. yeah. in many ways. Yeah. And you, you want to be able to have it accessible and be able to be uh, utilized, but also protected in a way that, that, makes the utilization a broad, powerful, impactful experience. Absolutely. So, no, that's, I think, I think Tracy Ward at the EU. Who's our executive yeah, director. Yeah, she, she, you know, she has a great vision for us. She and, really does. And, and it's, it's very inspirational. Um, any, let's, let's, anything you want to talk about with regard to goals for the EDC? You know, I, I, you know we've been talking uh, broadly on the board, and I, it's important for people to understand that the board is all volunteers. Right. It's actually kind of the reverse of getting paid. Yeah. We've all been kicking yeah, in money. Yeah, I know. So the EEDC <laughs> is funded by uh, Town of Easton and by its board members, and then there is a handful of grants that come in from occasionally from the federal government and from the state on occasion. So we do, you know, we do some grant work like a lot of organizations do. But our board members are volunteers and they support, um, you know, they support financially. You know, we have been talking about, I think we're concerned about workforce housing, um, uh, affordable, sure. yeah, affordable yeah, yeah. housing. Um, there are some, you know, parcels around town which would be good for infill for really reasonably priced. Um, talking to some architects now about very efficient housing nearly net zero housing so the utility costs are wow. you know we're very low or yeah. nothing because um, you have a, you have all the people who support our town and our county 
right? The firefighters, the police mm -hmm. officers, our teachers, and the people who work in government, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's very easy to be priced out pretty quickly sure. with, that, with just a minimal amount of movement in the marketplace itself. And Easton can be an expensive place to live. Um, if you look at houses on Harrison Street now, you know, they're asking a million I, I to know. a million to I a know. million three. That's a lot of money, right? That is indeed a lot of money. So I think it's, an, you know, we have an obligation to make sure that uh, there is housing for everybody. That's important. Yeah. And that, again, that, that, that contributes to the well-being of the community on a lot of levels. Yeah. Before we conclude, I just want to talk about F3 Tech for a second. Okay, we can talk about F3 Tech. Explain to the folk what F3 Tech means. Right. Uh, F3 Tech means uh, all the technology uh, uh, surrounding the three Fs, farm, fish, and food. There you go. So, as you mentioned earlier, I'm on the board of the Eastern Shore uh, Entrepreneurship Center. Right. Mike Telke is, uh, is our executive director over there and recently received a very large uh, government grant to go out and to help develop technology around agriculture and aquaculture That's and cool. all those things. It's a, it's a huge trend yeah. right now. Um, we have all this beautiful you know, ag land around us. We're surrounded oh, by water. Absolutely. And there are a lot of people you know, in our community, but also outside our community, who have really unbelievable ideas. And the idea around this particular program, F3 Tech, is to help get those ideas to the surface, uh, make the those ideas and those companies to the extent it's possible. I mean, you you don't always hit great ideas, right? right? right. So there's you know you have to go through quite a few of them. But we have uh, programs where we take people through business development, business plan development, market feasibility. There are a lot of really important questions that need to be answered in ag right now and in aquaculture. So we like to pose those questions to entrepreneurs and then help them develop answers. You know, one of the, one of the big problems and is saltwater intrusion. You know, as, as right. the water tables rise uh, or the land is sinking, depending on where yeah, you yeah, are, yeah, yeah. saltwater intrusion into uh, fields is a really big issue. It's a huge so, issue. And there's a program coming up that F3 Tech is working on around saltwater intrusion. But it covers lots of things. We've talked with people who have specialized sensors and drones and satellite technology and but it, you know if i would say to the viewers if you know of people who have these great ideas to contact the eastern shore entrepreneurship center go online you'll find f3 tech there cool well yeah. tony thank you for you'll come back this is really fascinating there's so much going on there's a lot there's a ton going on it just shows the the vibrancy of of where we are in our yeah. community. Yeah. Thank you for being on the Rabbi's Roundtable. Always good to see you, Rabbi well, Peter. Likewise, and, and like I said, you'll come back and you'll we'll continue reporting on this because uh, I think it's important for all of the community to understand what's going on and, and see how we are trying to make progress in a multiplicity of, of areas. Yeah. So I encourage people to contact us and yeah, talk to us. Yeah, and if, if anybody's interested, the... Uh, um, the economic, the Eastern Economic Development Corporation website has a lot, and yep. the other sites you've mentioned yep. as well. And all our contact stuff. So thank you for being You're here. You're very welcome. Easton, we will be right back with the Rabbi's Roundtable. We are MCTV, Midshore Community Television. We want your help in making our station more robust so that we can better serve the residents of Talbot County. So, how can you help? If you are already making video content, submit that content for broadcast to the station. It's free! Are you involved in events, shows, or lectures that would be of interest to the community? We can work with you to figure out the best way to capture those events for airing on MCTV. Be it training, equipment rental, or hiring our production staff to film at a reasonable rate. Do you want to produce your own show? Let us help you get started. Come be a part of this valuable community resource. Email the station at nick at avalonfoundation.org or visit us in the basement of the historic Avalon Theater at 40 East Dover Street in downtown Easton. The Avalon Foundation and MCTV programming is proudly supported by Chuck Mandel Jr. of Benson & Mandel Real Estate. Look to Benson & Mandel for all your real estate needs. Did you know? MCTV programming is available online. 
Find our shows like Rabbi's Roundtable, Carlisle's Chesapeake, The Shameless Picture Show, Conversations with Sherry, and The Avalon Theater Presents at youtube.com slash midshore community television. And we are back. And welcome again to the Rabbi's Roundtable. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi at Temple B'nai Israel. And we are coming to you from the studios of MCTV in the basement of the Avalon Theater. And my second guest for today's taping is David Baker. David is the service officer for the Caroline Post 29 of the American Legion. Yep. David, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Um, to be here. Just so you'll know, David is a retired U.S. Army warrant officer. He served as a military policeman and a U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command special agent. Maybe we should do a segment of NCSI. I mean, that's a, you know, that's just being a wise guy. Very similar uh, organization. Yes, uh, and he, he, he was a CID agent. He has specialized training in forensic sciences, and his, his, his resume is impressive. Um, welcome, welcome to the Rabbi's Roundtable. Thanks Thank for being you. here. My you pleasure. want to share anything else about your background? Uh, uh, nothing in particular. I mean, I, I, I worked a lot of, uh, last part of my career, I worked a lot of uh, crimes against persons, so I was dealing with death investigations, sexual assault investigations, wow. things of that nature. Um, and I've been involved with the American Academy of Forensic Sciences, uh, oh, serving cool. on the board of directors for there and as the vice president of that cool. organization. Uh, I had a second career dealing primarily with digital forensics where I supported federal law enforcement and things of that nature. Wow. And now I'm retired uh, and on the Eastern Shore, but continuing to try to serve veterans and their families through my work in the American Legion. Wonderful, which really is why you're here today, yes. because the Post 29 is doing something. Yes. Why don't you share with everybody sure. what they're doing? So, and it's very cool, actually. Yeah. So we're uh, uh, hooking up with a couple of other organizations, service organizations, to put on a community PTSD awareness event uh, that will be held at our post. Uh, and this is mainly just to uh, provide a, a place where folks can come and learn a little bit about this and what kind of organizations there are around to help those who might be affected, uh, either family members or perhaps even themselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's it's an issue that... Uh, uh, you see, you see a lot about it in the movies, but real life is a totally different thing than what's portrayed sure. in, in the media. Many sure. Times. And just in case somebody doesn't know what PTSD stands for, it's post-traumatic stress yes. um, disorder, yep. and and it's not just military. You know, no, know, and I, I don't. You're right. I don't think people yeah. recognize that. The common perception is that uh, it's a military thing, right? You see the movies about the Vietnam vet yeah, who yeah. saw something horrific and where his buddy died and he didn't die, right. and so he comes back and. He, has flashbacks, which is the most common thing. Uh, but the reality is uh, PTSD and a related condition called critical incident stress, it affects uh, folks like first responders, your police oh, officers, sure. firefighters, emergency medical technicians, uh, because they're exposed to a number of these type of incidents on a recurring basis. Uh, and not only that, but uh, victims and sometimes witnesses of uh, violent crime, yeah, uh, mass casualty events like a plane crash, or natural disasters where there's been a flood yep. and there's been a lot of uh, destruction, uh, they can suffer from these same thing. A, a very recent incident, which I'm sure you're very familiar with, was uh, we had uh, the uh, first responders, uh, patrons, and the staff from the YMCA here in Easton that were subjected to a horrific attack by a man with a knife uh, just a few months ago. And Not some of the folks in the, in the community are affected by this uh, critical incident stress. Not only am I well aware of it, it happened, and I got a call at 10 o'clock to go to the Y and to deal with those who witnessed it. Yeah. It was, for me, horrific. It was traumatically horrific yes. for those who actually saw it. Yes, so yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's interesting that you, you bring that up. That was, and people are still wrestling with what yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. It's, it's, this is not something that's just a, you know, you can just do a uh, five-minute counseling session. No, and no, 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 everything's no, better. no, it's, no, it's no, a, no, 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 that was a rem that was a remarkable moment. Robbie yeah. Robbie Gill, who is chairman of the uh, Chesapeake YMCA consortium, um, called and yeah. that was, I will tell you uh, not to, not to sidetrack here, but uh, that was the first time I had ever dealt with that kind of an issue, right. and it w it really was um, it was traumatic. No yeah. question. So anyway, absolutely, but, absolutely. Uh, and I also after nine eleven, yeah, they, they, I remember reading stories about. Not just the, the the people involved, but the witnesses and the right. and and those that 
were not directly involved, but stood and watched the towers. And, and not only that, uh, some people just from the media coverage of that, some people sitting in their own homes, yeah. a thousand miles away, were affected almost as much as people on the scene Without just from pressure. having to watch. And they couldn't tear themselves away and just watch it over and over and then have uh, all these symptoms from PTSD uh, or yep. critical incident yep. stress where they're observing this. Mm -hmm. right. So, so um, the event's going to help bring awareness to this. Right. Um, how can the community help in this? Well, so I think one of the most important things uh, for the community is to be aware of what the symptoms of, of PTSD or critical, critical incident stress might be. Uh, and these symptoms may not appear for months or sometimes even years after an event. Uh, some of these might be a lack of concentration. Uh, a person just can't maintain a focus. A, a, a focus on something. They could have insomnia. Uh, they could have feelings of guilt or shame, uh, commonly called survivor's guilt. You know, why did this person right. go and it didn't yeah, happen yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, they can have negative moods uh, about things or, or just a negative attitude towards things that just sort of develops. Uh, and, and like I said, insomnia is a very common thing where they just can't have a good night's sleep. Um, recurring bad dreams. Um, and lack of interest. Sometimes people are very interested in certain topics and they spend a lot of time, mm -hmm. hobbies or other interests that they have, and all of a sudden they just have a total lack of interest for no, no good reason. And I, I think being aware of these symptoms is really the key because this allows people who know people well to say, hey, something's quite right. not quite right here. Right. And this is the first step in recognizing this person might need help. Uh, so if you're yeah. attuned to these symptoms and you know the person's been in a situation that might uh, precipitate this kind of a uh, thing, either critical incident stress or yeah. PTSD, that you're aware of that and then maybe you can take some steps to help that person. I, I, I actually think it's important uh, that it be seen not exclusively as a as a military reality. Absolutely. A and that the, the horizon is raised and people recognize that stressful encounters can yep. produce this. Even a motor vehicle accident yeah. uh, where you yeah, see yeah, yeah. somebody seriously injured or even killed. Um, so tell me what local services are available for if somebody realizes that they are now involved in this, this dynamic. Yep. What so, can they do? Where can they go? So sure. Uh, so a lot of local health departments here on the shore actually have staff that are trained, uh, counselors that are trained in dealing with this kind of situation. Um, Caroline County even has a mobile treatment unit that they're doing a pilot oh, on yeah. right now, which could even involve telemedicine. So that's a pilot program that the state of Maryland is doing in Caroline County. Um, there's an organization called the International Critical Incident Stress Foundation. Uh, and for many years, they have been involved in training what they call peer teams to help first responders oh, uh, deal with this. Uh, uh, primarily because these are folks that are exposed to the same kind of issues that their peers are, and so they might have had an experience with critical incident stress or PTSD and might recognize in their peers, and help, and they're trained what they call uh, first aid, crisis, uh -huh. crisis first aid, sure. uh, to try to help them through that. Um, the uh, American Legion uh, does provide service officers like myself that can help direct veterans to care, uh, and a lot of veterans wind up being the first responders. A lot of people don't realize sure. how many the first responders are, are actually vets. Uh, so we are aware of the resources that are available through the Department of Veterans Affairs uh, program. The YMCA has community health initiatives. Uh, they focus both on mental and physical health and they look at it as a holistic approach to, to sure. care. So they have some counseling services that are available yep. and can be aware of other things. Uh, and another uh, thing, the state of Maryland has a Veterans Affairs Department. There's disabled American veterans. Uh, and a lot of people don't think about it, but members of the clergy are often well trained in counseling people yep. and helping them find yep. uh, a path forward. Yep. Uh, a lot of people don't necessarily equate the, the clergyman with being a counselor, but really that's probably uh, one of the more important roles that they have. I will attest to that. <laughs> so there are a lot yeah, of resources, yeah, no, and I'm sure there are plenty of other resources that I just haven't mentioned. It's sure. just when you start thinking of all the different ways you can well, uh, help people, sometimes you you miss one, and it's no slight on them. It's just right. that you can't think of them all at the No, no, but, but at, at least there at least there are there are options in front of people. That's correct. Um, I guess our job is to get that out, and one of the reasons that uh, yeah. I'm glad you're at the Rabbi's Roundtable to to publicize this. Because uh, th this is real and, and yep. it's not made up, and uh, no, it's not. To and suggest that is in inappropriate. And the, really, the most difficult part many times is the person that's uh, affected by this. 
they don't really realize it, or if they're first responder, many times they don't want to admit that they're affected by it. Uh, yeah. My my friend Bill, you know, he was at the same scene that I am. He right. doesn't seem to be having problems, so right. there's something oh, wrong. There's something wrong with me. That's uh, and they and they're too sometimes too proud to, to right. seek assistance. Right. But their their family and friends should be able to recognize some of these symptoms that they're displaying, yeah. and then maybe talk to them one on one and say maybe maybe there's something we can do to help you. So tell me about the event that's going to take place. Uh, sure. That, that's so it'll be very cool, actually. Yeah. So on uh, Saturday, October nineteenth, uh, it, it's going to be at uh, Caroline Post twenty nine in Denton, Maryland, uh, from one in the afternoon to four thirty. We're going to have an event. Uh, we're going to have some live music by a band called The Breath of Fresh Air. We're going to provide free food and refreshments for folks that can come uh, to participate. We're going to have representatives from the ICISF, from the YMCA, and from the American Legion there. They can just talk to people about uh, what resources are available through the different right. organizations. The Caroline County Mobile Treatment Unit itself will actually be there uh, on display so folks Wonderful. can kind of see what's there. Um, so it's really just going to design to be a, a, an afternoon where people can kind of come out. I'm hoping the weather will participate with us. I'll do my best. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so just to have people have the opportunity in, in a non non stress situation to kind of find out a little bit more about this. Yeah. No, that's as and I'm sorry I can't be there. It's my 50th high school reunion. Yep. So I'm going to can't go miss see, that. No, I'm going to go see people I haven't seen literally there in you 50 go. years. Uh, I want to make sure everybody understands who's invited. That this, oh, this is open to the community. Sure, right? we really would like everybody that's able to come out and attend. Um, we, I think it's one of those things where you don't necessarily know when you might have somebody that you know or their friends, family that might be uh, involved in some kind of situation mm -hmm. where they might develop this. So I think it's a good thing to be able to recognize these symptoms and, and kind of understand what kind of things are available for people. And so it's really really open to anybody and we hope uh, folks will turn out for it. and that's a good it's a good turnout I hope so too give us the date and time and sure. location again it's October 19th uh, it's a Saturday it's a week from this coming Saturday from 1 in the afternoon to 4 30 and it's gonna be at Caroline Post 29 uh, on Legion Road in Denton Maryland yep. Uh, and I and hope the we look forward to people out. coming out. Yep, absolutely. David, thank you for being here. You're and, sure welcome. And, and, thank you, know you for what? having you'll me. You'll come back, you'll tell us how it went, and uh, okay. we'll, we'll review. Sounds like and, fun. But, but again, this is, uh, this is an important topic. This, yep. this, this, one of the things that I've witnessed, you know, as, as, as a rabbinic counselor and that right. sort of thing, I've seen how this affects not just the, the patient, the person right. who's suffering from it, but how it affects those around him or her as well. Yeah. Your family so, and loved ones often yeah. suffer as much uh, oh, sometimes from worse. the results. Yeah. Sometimes worse. David, thank you very much. We've been talking to David Baker, who is uh, the service officer for Caroline Post 29 of the American Legion. I hope the event is extremely successful, even better than you hoped. And uh, as I said, you'll come back and you'll give us a, a, a review of how it went. I'll certainly do that. Thanks thank so you, much Rabbi. for being at the Rabbi's yeah. Roundtable. Thank you. Easton. We will see you next time on the Rabbi's Roundtable.